Hi, I'm Michael C. I'm a teacher, I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm an uncle, I'm a friend, I'm a husband, but most importantly, I'm a father. I created this guy box in 2021 to show to you that being a rapper and a ball player isn't the only way they can provide opportunity for themselves. In season five, Rise Above, we're gonna explore some special guest journey and see how they rose above their circumstances. And they just didn't become good, they became great. Welcome to Rise Above. In this episode today, we have a discussion with two master's degrees going on his third, still in high spire, computer science teacher, Jeremiah Mitchell. And in this discussion, we're going to discuss what drove him to get three master's degrees and what is it like to be a black male teacher in the inner city school district? And here's the big question. What is the youth missing in education? And a lot more. Now let's see how he rises above and he doesn't let his temporary setback become his permanent failures. Enjoy. Welcome to Rise Above, where we never let our temporary setback become our permanent failures. I'm me, Michael C., the source of life over the mic. Remember, hit that like and subscribe button. Remember, it's only $3.99. Now, let me sit back and let me introduce you to this man. Right? I've known this guy from the cradle. I mean, we've done it all. He showed me, this is one of the guys that showed me the city life. He showed me when you're you might be a suburb guy, but I got to show you where, what it comes down to, where your roots are from, where your dad came from, where he hit those streets. Salute to you, Pop. Salute to you too, Uncle Buck. Rest easy, King. But when it comes to this man, he's faced a lot of adversity. He's looked adversity in the eye, and he, he rose above the adversity. I'm talking to a man that didn't just get one master's degree, not two master's degrees, but he's working on his third master's degree. And I think he's rising above more than just situations. He's becoming a movement. I want to introduce to you my cousin, Jeremiah Mitchell. What's up, cuz? What's up? What's up, man? Glad to be here, you. man, on the Skybox, man. Yeah, man. Proud of you, man. I love this. Thank you, thank you, man. Welcome to Rise Above, man. Welcome, 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 man. You, you've gone through a lot, man. When I just, when we talked about it a little bit, and, oh, we come down to education, and then all of a sudden, we really dug into everything that's going on, and let's say, in the last 10 to 15 years. Oh. You're going through a lot, man. Yeah. You strive through, you know, sometimes you just... Got to keep on pushing. You know, my dad said, you know, you got to make hay while the sun shines. So I continue to just do it and follow his legacy and just continue to make hay while the sun shines. There you go. There you go. That's all you can do at the end of the day. Exactly. Let's get with these um, master's degrees that you got here, brother. Oh, man. You got, you, you got a lot of master's degrees here. Let's say you got. Just a little. Just a little. Oh, uh, just a little. <laughs> Let's start here. 2013, Instructional Technology at Harrisburg University. 2017, Secondary Education at Grand Canyon University. And he's working on his third master's degree in Business and Computer Information Technology, currently at IUP. Where do you get all this drive to get this, man? Yeah, my daughters that I work with in the community and just the fact that I got a lot right on my back and you know, like I like to live up to my dad's expectation. That's where it goes down there. But it always starts somewhere. It always starts at a beginning. And I'm going to go with your higher education. You were at an HBCU. You were at Dell State. No. What happened? I didn't like Dell State, yo. I feel like I was going to the 13th grade, uh, down to my roommate, 
But now it's like I'm, I'm feeling it. I ain't gonna lie, a little bit of homesick too. So, you know, after to be honest, after a few weeks packed up, I was like, yo, I'm going back home. I'm not feeling this. And I was like, yo, reset. So the reset, when it came down to a lot of people do go home, but they don't, they stay home. They don't go pursuing their education. What gave you that drive at that time to keep pursuing your, your higher education? Again, we're back to my pop. My pop said, pop said yo, you gotta do something. You know, you gonna be home, you gonna work and do what you gotta do. And so I just put my head down, went to hack for like a few years, and then I ended up going to Westchester. Oh. WCU, that's a shout out, shout out to y'all, shout out to the Rams, you already know what it is. So let's, we're going to fast forward a little bit and we're going to get into your teaching now. How long have you been teaching? Ooh. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started teaching biology, working at the YMCA, uptown, Camp Curtin. There you go. Right there, yo, that's where it all started, at Camp Curtin. Just go. working with the kids in the city. And I was like, you know what, I got to do something different. Like, and I like working with the kids, so I just started. And from there, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to just start working with kids. There you go. What did you like most about teaching? What I like is, I like seeing that spark in kids' eyes who want to learn. Like, they get that drive, and it's like, it's like magic, and I see it in their eyes. And I see them like, yo, I got it. I got it, Mr. Mitchell. I got it, Mr. J. I got so many names I wear, but it's like, I got it. I like to see that I got it look on their face. There it is. There it is. Fill in this sentence that I'm, I'm going to give you. The hardest thing about teaching is being relatable. And when I say be relatable, you can do anything, but if you can be relatable to the kids, it makes teaching easy. And like when they grasp it, I think Rita Pearson said the best kids don't learn from a teacher they don't like. And I kind of take heed of being a teacher that all the kids like or also respect. Right. Just because you like me, but I need you to respect me at the end of the day. Right. And understand, like, yo, I always got your best interest in mind. Even though it might not seem like it, I still got your best interest in mind. I don't know about this, y'all, but this is a good conversation. And we're going to get back to you in one, two, three, in about five seconds. You already know what it is. Back to you on Rise Above, brought to you by the Skybox. Rise Above brought to you by the Skybox. You know who I am. It's me, Michael C., the source of light over the mic. I got my special guest here, Jeremiah Mitchell, Mr. Masters himself. Three masters at it while we're talking about it. But let's keep it going here. Let me ask you, what is one thing that you want your students to learn from you by the end of this year? That you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Don't look at your setbacks, but look at what is for to come is your upcoming. And we all got, we all come from somewhere and we all got somewhere to go. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? Tell us about a student that stood out in your class that you would have never thought would have stood out in your class at the beginning of the year. Oh man, still, still early in the year, but they all stand out. But if I had to choose one, I got this one young lady I already knew she was going to be special, but like she loves coding. Um, everything that I hand out to her, she just kills me, you know, like hands down. And she swear that she just going to go back to doing pixel art coding. I was like, we can't do that. We got to keep moving forward. But she's going to be a standout student when she graduates. There it is. And with that, be with that being said, you like to see this twinkle in, in your student's eye. Where are you currently teaching at? Let me ask you that. Teaching at Stilly, high spot. There it is. Junior so high, high school. I see you have a cooler shirt on. Yeah, I'm cooler to the day I die. There it I is. I wreck that rack and wear it all day. There <laughs> it is. There it is. Cougar stand up. HBG stand up. In your own words, 
what does it feel like as a black male teacher teaching in an inner city school district? First of all, it's an honor. Second of all, yeah, you have to give it down. I mean, you have moments where you're like, yo, sometimes you don't let the kids get it, but then also you gotta be a reason why they come and want to learn, a reason why they want to be there. And I think also, I think for many African American males, we get deterred from teaching because we look at all the certifications and stuff that we gotta go through. Just to teach. This is why I want my third master's, so I can continue teaching. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's look at it like this. If it wasn't education, what would it be? I always wanted to be an electrical engineer. There you go. And that's the reason I went to Dell State for for electrical engineer, but it's funny. I went for electrical engineering and fashion design because I love clothes. There you go. Yeah, you was always the big man, always. Yeah, you, you could drive. Still a I know that's right. I know that's right. I know that's right. But again, we got a good one here, man, when it comes to it. I mean, he got us on the education. He's sitting here giving us all the beautiful insights. Well, we'll be back on Rise Above with Jeremiah Mitchell in two seconds. Let's go get him. Track, but we feel like a glove well. Wrong direction, lovers What can we recover? Not sure I can suffer another Wrong direction, love We're back, we're back, we're back On Rise Above, brought to you by The Good Skybox I mean, Michael T, the source of life over the mic I got my special guest, Jeremiah Mitchell and we're talking about right now education. But let's get let's just pop into a serious note. What do you think about all the school violence that's happening in the school in the schools today? And what do you think are some of the solutions of the schools for school violence? You know, classroom management is great. And also, you know, being visual and also this being visual of the student things going on, being aware of what's going on in the classroom, being aware of what's going on. In the Hallway, but like the hallway to me is like the streets. Like you gotta keep your ears to it and see what's going on. Um, I'm nosy, so I eavesdrop. I like to walk around the classroom here, what's going on with these kids and what's going on. But also, you gotta be able to meet these kids and create create an environment where they can come talk to you. Because I'm going through a lot of stuff that you know me and you probably never thought about facing, but they face it day to day, and a lot of that springs from social media. A lot of that springs from, you know, their own life and all that. So it's it's just you're more than just teaching you out here and you gotta be visual for what's going on. That is so true. If you had the power to change something in education, what would it be? If I had the power to change something, I just change how teachers are trained on how to interact with kids and how they manage the classroom. Like and I think every teacher, I don't care black, blue, yellow, orange. We all need cultural training. Or because there's different cultures that we go in the school. I agree with that because I was looking on my past, um, I had a past guest who was talking about that. And she was saying that one of the big things is that when you have your first year teachers, they don't get, they just get thrown into the school environment. Or they'll go into a school environment like, oh, okay, I'm making $80,000 a year. But then, not knowing that you're in inner school, inner city schools, or something where it's not what you're used to, that eighty thousand dollars does not look good when you're always breaking out fights every single day. Or dealing with behavior problems or every day. Exactly. Like Students cussing you out, talk to class. Like you deal with a lot, and you just gotta learn to manage that. And you got that's you gotta rely on your um, your administration. That's you gotta rely on certain peers. You gotta rely on. Security guards, I think, to be honest with you, the unsealed hero of any school to me are security guards and the secretary. I agree with that. I agree. I definitely agree with that because that's, when you look at the secretary, secretaries are the, are the I wouldn't call them the first line of defense, but I'll, they're no, the you're first right, people. You're right. They're the first people because like, they know what's going on. They know the parents more than the teacher. 
you know, who the kid is, because they deal with all their vows. And then you got your security people. They know who everybody is. Security people will be the people who will talk to the kids, even the age. You know what I mean? Like, you know, those are just unsung heroes of any school. I and agree. they get overlooked so much, which I really, to be honest with you, I don't like it. No, I agree with you. It, it does. It does really get. It, it really does hurt the team that you see, it, like aides, like you said, secretary, and you're looking at security. They really do get overlooked in that sense. And I even go even one further. I look at cafeteria workers also. So even the maintenance people. Maintenance you got to think also. anybody who got an influence on that child is important. Anybody who's in that school, period, around kids is important. Agreed. Agreed. Because at the end of the day, let's say if Johnny's coming in and he's like, he is in a bad mood. But if I come in, hey, what's going on, Johnny? Well, how you been? You know, da, 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 da. you know how I am. Mm-hmm. That will turn change Johnny's day just like that, just because of that. And just like that, yeah. And it's like, so in my classroom, I got a, um, a care corner. I got kids who just walk in the class just to get lotion. Stuff. I got a, a care closet where I have pads, deodorants, I have deodorant, baby powder, um, body wash, anything the kid may need, they come to my class and get it, and they just see I'm a submissive. When I get the keys, I don't ask no questions on what they want or what they need. I just give it to them, like, yo, go and get what you need. Right. And I had a parent one time come through, she just said, I see your closet because I heard about it. Go ahead, man. Whatever you want. Take whatever you need because it's a blessing to be a blessing and you never know what somebody may need to help them get through just a little hard time or just to get over that hump because it changes a lot throughout their day period Easy. you ain't never lied dude. let me ask you this this last question what do you what do you think our kids lack in education so big on financial literacy like I'm actually going I'm actually going to change again I'm turning my computer class I'm teaching using computers to teach financial literacy I like that and I got a whole team of people that I think I'm going to be bringing on board to help me out with it because I can't do it alone this is the final break but I want y'all to sit back and relax and enjoy all this uh, that we've been giving us this beautiful insight you already know what it is. This is Rise Above, brought to you by the Sky Mountain. Hey, if you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns, hit me up at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com. I will read and I will respond to every question, thought, or concern. And I may even put one or two questions on the next episode. And also remember, be good to yourself, y'all. Back to the skybox. You already know, man. The final break. You already know what we're gonna do. We gotta do it before before we go. Y'all already know what it is. It's the pod deck, y'all. It's the pod deck, y'all. We gotta see what's going on. We're gonna shuffle it up. See the questions. See what the pod deck is asking. And then we'll get our answers. Let's go get them. Let's get it. Right, the pod deck is shuffling. You know I gotta say something, right? What? You know, both our pods will be turning in their grave. We're like, yo, you know oh, you supposed to shuffle that by the hand. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> on it. I got my pod, I got my little shuffler, baby. My little car <laughs> shuffler, baby. All right, guy. All right, let's see, let's see. Pick car, pick two, two, baby, pick two, baby. Okay, okay, one is okay what's the favorite thing you bought this year Ooh, i'd say the favorite thing i bought this year favorite thing you bought this year y'all my certification i like that the certification i've Cert- been chasing this one actually i went back and got it i had graduated from um, ashbury university and i was one class short of becoming a um, technology specialist. So I paid for the class 
out of my pocket and I aced it. But I was locked in. I mean, I cut on social media, I cut people off for this one. I was like, yo, I'm hungry. I'm going, I'm coming for everything that's owed to me. Mm-hmm. And that's owed to me. There and you I was go. like, only one class short, so I just came and got it. And it's kind of hard when you cut everything off and you start cutting people off. When you're trying to elevate, you got to know how to drop your weight. But you also see what it, what it's hitting for. People that you have to drop like that, the people that know, they know. People that don't, they weren't with you in the first place. Facts. Number two? Number two, number two, number two. Which word or phrase do you most overuse? Mm. Dad, that's a hard one. I have to say the most phrase. It's a couple of them, but if I had to go with one, you might have a cut. Go ahead, give me one. Don't nobody fuck with you how you fuck with you. Really? And I gotta tell myself that every day in the mirror, because ain't nobody gonna push you how you gonna push yourself. And ain't nobody gonna understand the hardships and everything that you go through. You know, you can tell to everybody about it, but don't nobody know how you feel deep down inside. And sometimes you gotta rise above. Got any shout out? I got shout outs, man. I got a shout out to the whole Still My Family, to those guys out there. Um, they got a game this weekend. I hope they, you know, I know they're going to win and bring home that title. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Got anybody else? Anybody else? Yo, most love to all my family, um, my cousins, my brothers, Big Elmer, Big Mitch. Um, my shout out to you. For having you on here. No doubt, guys. Yeah, no doubt. Man, no doubt. No always. Doubt. But most of all, shout outs to the kings that rest my dad and my godfather, Curtis, his father. Shout outs to them. Most of all. You already know who it is, Nico. You know what it is, my love. You already know who it is. When it comes down to everybody, I want to thank you, everyone that's been looking at them, turning in, tuning in to the Skybox. But if you like this episode, I would love to hear from you. All you have to do is email me at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com with your thoughts, questions, or concerns. Or who would you love to sit here and talk with me for an episode at Rise Above? I want to thank Jeremiah Mitchell, Mr. Three Man Degree, for giving us all his insight about education and all his insight about how to relate to his students and a lot more. I'm Michael C, the source of light over the mic. Until next time, be good to yourself, y'all.